This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Now let us talk about something called month end and year end checklist. In a project. So when we're talking about month end and year end checklist in a project, we are specifically talking about two projects here. One is your implementation project. Second one is your rollout project. Now third one is your support project, which we're not writing here because in the support project, you're not going to prepare any month end checklist. Whenever you're in a support project, checklist related to month end, checklist related to year end is already prepared by the project team. When you're talking about the project team, you're talking about the implementation team or the rollout team. Support team is not called as a project team. Support team is different, which will come after completion of your implementation or after completion of your project go live. Now in this situation, when you're talking about month end checklist, year end checklist, you have to assume that you are in a project of either an implementation or you're in a project of rollout in which you are playing a role of SAP FICO consultant. In which you are playing a role of SAP FICO consultant based on your role as a FICO consultant, you need to decide what will be the list of month end activity, what will be the list of year end activity. Now, in general, there is a list of month end activities. There is a list of year end activities. Now, when you're talking about month end activity, when you're talking about year end activity, there are two points to be considered here. First thing, if I say month end activities, first we'll try to understand conceptually what are this instead of just writing down the list. Second one, we will talk about year end activities. Now, whenever you're talking about month end activities and you're talking about year end activities, make sure your month end activities are not fixed. These are not fixed in all projects. Same thing here. When we're talking about these are not fixed in all the project, then on what basis you are going to fix this that the checklist for the month end checklist for the year end is completely based on your business process. These are based on business processes. Similarly, these are also based on business processes because you have to keep in your mind, especially when you're talking about in any interview or when you're explaining to somebody in any project, make sure whatever the list that you're telling, you are able to justify the list. Whatever the list that you're telling, you are able to justify the list, meaning you're talking about any particular activity as a month end. You should know what is this month end activity? What will happen with this month end activity? It's not about reading through the activity list. You should read the activity list or you should tell the month end activity list in a sequential order. You need to understand the dependency. You need to also understand the sequence. It is not that randomly you can execute any month end activity in any sequence strictly not allowed in any project. When it comes to year end activity, same logic, not the list of year end activity. You should know what activities are part of your year end. What are the dependencies? When we're talking about dependencies, there are certain activities which you can straight away execute. There are certain activities which you cannot straight away execute. Before you execute one activity, different dependent activities must be executed or performed. What are those dependent activities? Slowly, you should have a basic understanding. Even though you're not able to understand in depth at this moment, but at least sufficient dependencies prerequisite and what is going to happen by executing the respective month end activity, you should have minimum knowledge about it. Because when you're talking about month end activities, there are two points here. And this is applicable for both month end and year end. Whatever the points which, which we are going to write now are commonly applicable for both month end and year end. First point. 
let's say activity list for both month end and year end what will be the activity list for month end and then year end you should have a list once you have the list sequence of the list when you're talking about sequence of the list it is not that straight away you can talk any sequence for example just to give you an example for example i'll write an example okay uh, let's say grir clearing first point i'm writing grir clearing next one i'll put maintain exchange rates and third one i'll put foreign currency valuation next one i'll put open and close posting period and let's say next thing i'll put depreciation and next thing i'll put AUC settlement and next thing I'll put internal order settlement now so far I have given seven activities here so far I have given or I've put seven activities here now here I cannot say GRIR clearing maintain exchange rate foreign currency valuation open close posting period depreciation AUC settlement order settlement this way I can remember it is fine when you're remembering it it is fine but the moment you are talking about the month end activity list either with your client or in your project or to your interviewer this is wrong if you're talking the same list same sequence as it is in your interview you're wrong to your user you're wrong in your project you're wrong as a consultant if you're making a document then also you're wrong because there is something called a dependency when you're talking about there is something called a dependency which one should be executed first which one should be executed next you should know the minimum basic knowledge otherwise it's not about listing out or reading the month and activity list in any interview when somebody is specifically asking you about have you worked on month and activities or did you get any issues did you face any challenges during your month and activity why they're asking they are not asking you to tell or read out the configuration steps or the activity list they are asking you to tell in a sequential order the way that you are talking the sequence that you are following will reveal what kind of knowledge you have on month end activity whether you really worked on month end activity or not is straight away revealed the way you are talking the way you are telling the month end activity list will reveal everything will reveal. now here if you are talking about grir clearing if you are talking about grir clearing as i say that this is my month end activity others please go on mute others i'm talking about grir clearing here i need to make sure at what stage you are going to create grir clearing i need to make sure at what stage you are going to perform grir clearing i think somebody should go on mute okay you should know at what stage grir clearing is to be done and if i'm talking about maintain exchange rate when you're supposed to maintain exchange rate when you're supposed to maintain exchange rate you should know similarly foreign currency valuation at what stage you should run the foreign currency valuation open and close period at what stage i should open and close period depreciation when should i run the depreciation 
AUC settlement when I should run my AUC settlement internal order settlement when I should run my internal order settlement in this situation specifically if you talk about open and close period if I do this at this stage is this correct or wrong if I do open and close period at fourth position is it correct or wrong 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 sir wrong. Wrong. this is straight away wrong though your month end checklist is correct sequence of open and closing period is wrong because tomorrow as part of your project handover when we're talking about project handover because we were talking about from a project point of view you're talking from a project point of view according to the project you're talking about implementation project rollout project now from your implementation project and from your rollout project there is something called project handover project handover this project handover is nothing but moving from implementation or rollout to support phase there is nothing but moving from implementation or rollout to support phase now if you are the consultant who worked on the implementation if you are the consultant who worked on the rollout project what is going to happen as per your implementation rollout you are going to handle something called there is something called hypercare support you are going to work on hypercare support this hypercare support is usually one month to three months this is the minimum duration one month maximum duration of any hypercare is three months depending on the project depending on the size of the business and all sometimes we may be providing hypercare support for one month sometimes we may be providing hypercare support for three months but nevertheless it is between one to three months tomorrow when somebody is asking tomorrow when somebody is asking were you part of any support you have to specifically tell you were part of hypercare support whenever you're talking about hypercare support always keep in your mind you are from the project team when i say you are from the project team because you know right from the beginning when i say right from the beginning right from the requirement gathering until the project go live you know what happened what requirement was taken what documentation was there what scenarios are applicable what issues you were getting according to that what are the month end activities to be executed your user is closing the first month close with the help of project team when you're talking about user is closing the first month close with the help of a project team as a fico consultant as a fico consultant you are going to help assist guide your end user to close their first month closure to generate trial balance pnl balance sheet again wherever you are talking about you are going to land at tb pnl balance sheet at the end whatever you talk at the end you are going to land at tb pnl balance sheet you are going to say that my month end is completed only when you generate tb pnl balance sheet tb is approved pnl balance sheet is approved meaning number from the pnl number from the balance sheet is approved by your cfo is nothing but your month end is closed until your cfo confirms that this profit is okay this pnl this balance sheet asset liability position is okay you are not going to officially declare that you have closed the month now at what stage you are going to do it what are the activities that are to be done why we need to do the month end activity because there are certain accounting entries which are posted only at the month end there are certain accounting entries which are posted only at the month end and there are certain accounting entries which will have some dependency of data entry there are certain month end activities which are dependent on data entry meaning if you're talking about depreciation i cannot straight away run the depreciation why i cannot straight away run the depreciation before i run the depreciation if i can i straight away start running the depreciation on 31st of any particular day or on 1st of any particular month if i run the depreciation on any month last date on any month for example our month end closure logic is 3 days next calendar days or 3 days next working days meaning plus 3 working days or plus 5 working days plus 3 or 5 calendar days whatever could be the organization logic according to that if i execute it on 
last day of the month or first day of the month second third day of the month can i execute as on on my own choice or i need to see certain dependencies before running the depreciation can i blindly go and execute will it be okay or it is wrong no sir if i straight away execute my depreciation i know that afab to run the depreciation i go do a test run test run shows no errors found can i go and execute the depreciation straight away is that okay or not okay if my depreciation test run is successful there are no errors if i run the depreciation is it okay or not okay not okay not okay it is not okay because before you run the depreciation in the asset accounting depreciation is the last activity in the asset accounting depreciation is the last activity before you come to depreciation you need to make sure for that particular month whatever the assets that are purchased whether every asset that is purchased in this particular month has been capitalized or not first point look at your asset related purchase order because you have capex pos or asset related purchase order look at the asset related purchase order make sure whatever the purchase order that is created for the asset if grn is done if a grn is done meaning asset is received invoice is also received if it is pending for booking that has to be capitalized in the same month that has to be capitalized in the same month i cannot say the asset is already received the uh, department or the division or the branch is already started using the asset but we forgot to capitalize the asset we forgot to capitalize the asset then it does not make any sense that you are running the depreciation asset is being used but depreciation is not posted because you have not yet capitalized the asset you need to give a checklist before running the depreciation make sure all the assets whatever is created or whatever are purchased are capitalized the person who is working in the asset accounting or fixed asset department will have to make sure all the assets whatever are purchased in this particular month if the asset is already received if the asset is physically received you need to make sure it is capitalized capitalizing we are nothing but posting the asset invoice posting of asset invoice is nothing but asset capitalization make sure assets are capitalized point number 1 point number 2 if there are any auc assets if there are any auc asset make sure your aucs are settled if there are any auc asset make sure auc asset is settled if i directly settle auc asset is it correct if i directly settle auc asset is this correct if i directly settle my auc is this correct or not correct hmm incorrect this is not correct how your auc asset will receive the amount based on what from where auc asset receiving the value in general internal order internal order the auc internal asset order. is receiving the value from internal order now for you to flow the value for you to update the value in auc asset you need to make sure your internal order is settled first meaning you need to ensure your internal orders are settled first now in order to make sure internal order is settled first you need to give a checklist for all the auc respective internal order must be created all the auc related cost or all the auc related expenses are booked in the internal order and all the internal orders are settled all the internal orders are settled make sure during the internal order settlement there is no error make sure during the internal order settlement there is no error or user is not skipping or user is not forgetting to settle any of the internal order when you are talking about internal order settlement there are two types of order settlement one is individual order settlement another one is collective order settlement whenever you are doing the internal order settlement in any project now do you have internal orders commonly created or internal orders created for a specific purpose how do you create internal orders randomly from any category or specific order category is there for nature of business based on the nature of transaction how are they created natural specific internal order do we create generally for whatever the purpose that i have 
or if internal order is related to my fixed asset do you have any identification for fixed asset internal order on what basis internal orders are classified <coughs> what is that called what is that a type <laughs> called real order a specific task statistical internal order there is something called order type when you start your doing internal order configuration you had something called order type yeah yes, order. initial creation right. we have to start yes right you have something called order type then you are going to create a variant you are going to create a variant in the order settlement in that variant you are going to include order type when you include order type in the internal order settlement profile sorry in the internal order settlement this one automatically when your user is selecting the variant all the orders whatever is created against the asset will be included automatically and inside the order settlement make sure in the order settlement rule, rule make sure the auc assets are updated when you run the settlement settlement gets executed properly all the auc asset value you need to make sure all the auc order value will become zero for that particular month value is updated in the auc asset then only you need to make sure order settlement once order settlement is a successful you need to make sure auc assets are settled once auc assets are settled only then you can run the depreciation apart from this if there are any other transactions for example you need to post any asset revaluations you need to adjust any depreciation or you need to do any asset transfer whatsoever make sure all the transactions related to assets are updated only after that you need to run the depreciation else your depreciation cannot be just like that run tomorrow when somebody is asking how do you run the depreciation or they might simply ask on what basis we run the depreciation don't simply tell go to afab or go to fair application post depreciation don't tell these answers because these are going to represent you have no practical experience you need to tell the dependencies when you are talking about the dependencies before posting the depreciation or for posting the depreciation what are the prerequisites what are the checklists that you are going to propose that you are going to inform to the user as a consultant tomorrow it is your responsibility to instruct your users to guide your business and then you are also supposed to prepare a documentation you are supposed to prepare a month end checklist in the month end checklist against depreciation you need to put what are the prerequisites you need to write a small write up in the notepad right before running the depreciation make sure aucs are settled internal order is settled all the assets are capitalized xyz whatever the points that are to be verified give a list and even after that if user is not doing it then it is user mistake even after that if user is not doing it then it is a user mistake but before user is executing it it is your responsibility as a consultant to give a checklist checklist should contain all this point otherwise what your user will tell your user your user will tell we were not aware of it and your user might talk show me where is this mentioned in the user manual your client may talk or your user may talk stating straight away can you show me where it is written that i need to verify this i need to do this before running the depreciation can you please show me where it is written in my user manual so it goes to a different direction if these points are not followed if these points are not followed things will go in a different direction because later on when you are in a support project or once this the project is handed over to support support consultant is not aware how support consultant will know what things are to be proposed all these things whatever are proposed by the implementation team same things are as it is used by the support consultant in case if they find any difficulties or in case if they find anything not not correct or something suspicious they might ask the user how did you run last month or uh, they might put some kind of cross question they might reach out to you though you are not there in that particular project you have been released from the project if you are in the same company but working for a different project you may be given a call by the current consultant who is working in the project as a support consultant they might ask you to ask i am working for so and so project as a support consultant i need few information or some information from you regarding this month end checklist they might say that i don't see this information is updated anywhere can you tell me how to do it now your implementation 
or your project consultant or implementation consultant may simply say no i don't remember i forgot very common they may say that no i don't remember i forgot quite common because they are out of the project they are working for some other client now you need to ask i don't find any document checklist you need to ask there is no document checklist because when this project handover is happening when this project handover is happening there is something called documentation when you're talking about a documentation from moving a project from implementation rollout to support there is a documentation checklist from the documentation checklist month end checklist is one of the checklist now as a fico consultant you should know how to look at month end checklist how to look at year end checklist don't blindly look at whether this is there or not there this list you will get from the google also you don't need to depend on the month end checklist document you will get from the google also but why you are specifically asking from the project team because they know what functionalities are implemented what kind of entries your user is posting accordingly how it has been decided to close the month there will be a strategy there will be an approach how you are going to close a month on a monthly basis what activities are supposed to be performed in what sequence in the same sequence your user will have to run the activities without skipping them there are certain activities with a dependency there are certain activities without a dependency now you should clearly list out what is depending activity what is independent activity independent activities you do at your own time there is no problem with the independent activity but wherever there is a dependent activity make sure all those dependent activities are executed first successfully without any error only after that you should execute the main activity which has got the dependencies and if you are able to talk these points and you are good with the month end activity if these points are not coming from your side when you are explaining especially in your interview or anywhere not only interview anywhere your explanation is wrong nobody will approve nobody will say what you said is correct because you are reading out the list from the google don't read google list tell the activities in a sequential order wherever there is a dependency make sure you talk about the dependency if this is missing whatever you tell will not hold weightage now if i am talking about now this is also straight away if you do it wrong meaning you should know the sequence why you need to do it if it is not there put not applicable if it is not there for your project put not applicable because in the interview you are talking in a generic way in the interview what we are doing we are talking in a generic way but while talking you need to make sure or, or while preparing the checklist you need to make sure if there is any particular activity which is not there put not applicable put not applicable but make sure you have a master list for the month end activities and if i say that i have foreign currency valuation can i update foreign currency valuation or can i run the foreign currency valuation straight away on first of next month is it correct if i do it if i run foreign currency valuation on first of next month is this correct or there is any dependency that is wrong month end date you should run all right this is wrong why this is wrong you need to make sure before running the foreign currency valuation first point is to maintain exchange rate agree first point is to maintain exchange rate but before maintaining exchange rate you need to make sure all the open items are cleared wherever there is a matching yes or no before you go to foreign currency valuation all the open items whatever you can clear you will have to clear it foreign currency valuation is nothing but you are valuating open items which are actually open at the end of the month which are actually open at the end of the month meaning you cannot clear it in this particular month only those entries will go to foreign currency valuation not exactly whatever is outstanding in the account you will have to verify the account especially the foreign currency account or all the accounts where there is a open item transaction in foreign currency take a dump of it look at it whether you can clear it or if there is any corresponding debit or credit already there if you can reverse it or sorry if you can pass it clear the entry clear it for the particular month then only go for foreign currency valuation else you are not supposed to do it and before using the foreign currency valuation make sure you will execute two things 
point number one exchange rate to be maintained point number two period to be opened if period is not opened if exchange rate is not opened foreign currency valuation will not be correct two dependencies straight away on the foreign currency valuation point number one exchange rate to be updated point number two period to be opened these are the mandatory prerequisite apart from this you need to make sure all the open items in the gl account customer account vendor account must be cleared wherever possible wherever possible all the open items from the gl account customer account vendor account must be cleared this might include open invoices open credit memos of customer vendor bank reconciliations okay any other transaction which is created in the foreign currency in gl account customer account vendor account must be cleared wherever there is a possible offsetting entry please clear it only the actual outstanding will have to be included while performing foreign currency valuation similarly when you're talking about grir clearing can i just like that run grir clearing at any given point of time is that okay or there is any prerequisite before you run grir clearing We have to confirm the rejection under nothing. Rejection for GRIR. Activity. Yeah, for GRIR also, this is not again direct activity. You need to make sure certain prerequisites are met. You need to make sure all the open purchase orders are validated. When you're talking about all the open purchase order, because there may be a purchase order created against which goods are already received but not accounted, or goods are already received, invoices pending for booking. First, look at take the purchase order dump. When I say take the purchase order dump, it is not your responsibility. It is responsibility of MM consultant because it has got straight away impact on the accounting. You must know from the base. When I say you must know the from the base, you'll have to take all the purchase orders, whatever is outstanding, whatever is open from the outstanding purchase order list or from the open purchase order list. Look at out of all the purchase orders. How many purchase orders where there is a GRN happened? How many purchase orders where GRN is already happened? And invoices pending. Invoices pending. Now you need to look at all these kind of things. If there is a pending GRN to be booked, get the GRN booked. If the pending invoice is booked, make sure that the invoice is also booked. Once these are done, only then you are supposed to make sure GRIR clearing is executed. And after executing the GRIR, make sure what is the outstanding amount in GRIR and whether this is okay? What is the outstanding amount in GRIR? Whether that is okay? Because your GRIR account is ideally supposed to show which balance, debit or credit? What is the ideal balance of GRIR account? You are talking debit. about GRIR account. Debit balance. Debit, debit balance. Debit. G- GRIR account is supposed to show debit balance or credit balance. Mostly credit balance. Right. If GRIR account is showing the credit balance, what does it indicate? It indicates invoice not received. Not received, but invoice, is not received. invoice is not received. Right. If GRIR account is showing credit balance, it is okay because goods are received, invoices not received or invoice is received but there is some discrepancy it is not yet approved for the payment it is on hold for booking fine if your grir is showing a debit balance is it okay or not okay it's not okay sir. if grir account is showing a debit balance something is wrong if grir account is showing debit balance something is wrong because invoice is booked but grn is not booked that is what it is representing is that correct If GRIR is showing a debit balance, it is representing invoice is booked, GRN is not booked. Now something is wrong, you need to go and identify from which purchase order this is coming. What are the purchase orders which are creating this result? Now your users are going to look at all these reconciliations. Your users are going to perform all these activities. Wherever they find the difficulties, wherever they find the differences, they are going to reach out to you. When I say they are going to reach out to you, this GRIR clearing 
is a finance activity this is a finance activity because this is going to pass debit credit accounting entry within the grir account meaning open transactions from the grir account are automatically cleared in this activity they say that no for this purchase order debit and credit we have meaning invoice is booked grn is also booked still system is not clearing it then they might reach out to you with different reasons you need to understand what are the possible reasons for grir not getting it cleared slowly we need to understand slowly we need to identify what kind of reasons could be there and where you can get the errors because especially when somebody is asking you about month end activities support tickets during the month end in every support project you will have many support tickets raised during the month end usually you will get lot of support tickets in any fico project when somebody is asking you about month end activities or when somebody is asking you about support incident support ticket please take out some support tickets from the month end activity not like grir is executed or they got an error be very specific what error they are facing and it it is not supposed to be a silly error it is not supposed to be a google error when i'm talking about google error when i'm talking about silly error it's something like which is usually not possible in any project no user will do such mistake such kind of errors you are not supposed to tell don't tell that user executed uh, grir account but he forgot to remove the test run entries are not posted he raised a ticket this kind of tickets you should never talk in the interview you should never talk in the interview because though it is genuinely correct there may be some users who will forget to remove the test run they feel that the entries are already posted but entries are not posted they may raise a support incident but don't talk these kind of support tickets in the project sorry in the interview you should know what kind of things you have to quote in the interview what kind of things though it is correct you have to skip in the interview because because of certain points that you are raising you will be in trouble just because you said this you will be in trouble they might take you to somewhere else why users are not properly selecting it in your project is there any month end uh, user manual you cannot say i do not know because you are telling you are the figo consultant in the project you cannot say i do not know if there is any user manual for the month end activity if you say yes then they might ask who prepared the user manual you cannot say my senior consultant prepared because if you say my senior consultant prepared it they might ask how long you are in this project they might ask how long you are in this project you say i am working in this project from last one year and then they might ask if you are there from the last one year were you part of this project from the implementation stage if you say yes then what exactly you did in your implementation because you are telling some point related to support and it has gone to your implementation stage and if you get somebody who is taking interview at a different level you do not know the person who is taking your interview is with with, with what mindset somebody may be re- really crazy somebody will ask okay at top level they will ask they'll understand but somebody will try to put you in trouble literally just to see to what extent you have the confidence whether you can communicate back to my cross questions or not meaning in this process what will happen you will get unnecessary tension you will go very nervous and you will not be able to answer you will literally get sweating in the interviews with some interviewers with some panel member whose intention is completely different when i say completely different they will put you questions in such a way that you will not even understand why they are asking but practically all the all their questions are interlinked interconnected all their questions are interconnected because of some xyz reason do not lose the opportunity when i say because of xyz reason do not lose the opportunity make sure when you are preparing try to understand all the possible points at least at very high level you don't need to know at in detail level but at least at the very high level if you are able to know those high level points if you are able to talk if you're able to use those terminology if you're able to connect the dots or if you're at least giving an effort to connect the dots you will be recognized meaning they will know that okay this candidate knows the impact meaning this candidate is not blindly talking is not just like that explaining he knows what is the behind the story of it or why we are doing it and that is what people are specifically looking and that is the only reason why they ask specifically about month end activities in any interview they are not concerned they are not at all interested about the list that you are telling 
whether you tell five activities whether you tell 10 activities 20 activities nobody cares and how you are elaborating each activity how you are connecting one activity with another activity and what kind of errors you are bringing in between what kind of support etiquette you are bringing in between matters or reveals what kind of knowledge understanding you have on sap pico these points it is your responsibility to understand as i said again you'll have to take a pen paper or take an excel sheet try to understand how month end activities are executed write down the list of month end activities now try to frame in the sequential order when i say try to frame in the sequential order the way you tell that a b c d x y z according to me everything is alphabet but if i say a d x y z and all you say that no your letters are correct but sequence is wrong in the similar way if you are talking to the opposite person who is fico you are talking to the other person who is sap fico and who is looking at in a proper way because there are some panel members there are some panel members who are only concerned about your flow your sequence and your approach if your flow your sequence your approach your understanding is correct irrespective of what you are talking you will be selected irrespective of what you are talking just because you know that flow you know that logic you are under you are trying to give those concepts you will be selected though you are talking wrong because your approach is correct your concepts are correct you are giving an effort to put them in a right way you will be selected you will have to consider all the points when i say you have to consider all the points tomorrow when you are attending the interview your interviewer may be from any category maybe person below your experience taking your interview person at same level of your experience may be taking your interview person at very senior level may be taking your interview no guarantee who will take your interview irrespective of the other person make sure you will be able to talk depending on the question you understand what is your mindset accordingly put your answers don't blindly give the same answer for every question whoever is asking don't give the same answer depending on the person change the way you talk change your examples change the flow whatever it is because end of the day your intention is to impress the other person with your explanation and you cannot give the same explanation don't expect everybody to get impressed with you depending on the other person change the way you talk change the way you give the example try to give the accounting entries accounting impact everything wherever possible depending on the situation you need to manage and this is possible only when you practically try to understand what is happening in month end activity else you will end up talking the list within few minutes you will tell 15 20 activities you will keep quiet stating that month end activities are completed you are not an end user to tell or to read out the list you are a consultant as a consultant you are supposed to, to decide the month end activity you are the decider how month end activities are going to be pre prepared you are the decider how these are to be executed sequence flow and what accounting entry is going to happen whether there is any accounting impact or there is no accounting impact for example if i maintain exchange rates will there be any accounting impact with this activity when i maintain exchange rate will there be any accounting impact no when I maintain exchange rate in OB08, will system post any accounting entry for exchange rate updating? No. There is no accounting impact here. For example, when I do GRIR clearing, will there be any accounting impact? No. No, sir. When you perform GRIR clearing, will there be any accounting impact? Yes or no? when you perform grir clearing yes. will there be any accounting impact or not you cannot talk about month end activity without grir account without grir if your month end activity is there you have not worked in the project as simple as that because every company will have purchases you know that every company will do the purchases based on the purchase order the moment you have the purchase order you have fimm integration fimm integration everybody blindly tells inventory account debit grir account credit yes or no yes when you are talking about inventory account debit material account debit grir account credit in your fimm integration so confidently you cannot skip this in your month end activity the same confidence that you are showing in the fimm integration 
GRIR account credit, you same confidence you need to put your GRIR clearing in the month end activity. Will there be any accounting impact when you run GRIR clearing at the month end? Yes or no? Yes. But when you're talking is... about accounting impact, what do we mean by accounting impact? When somebody is asking, will there be any accounting impact, finance impact? What do you mean by them? That means a journal entry will be the figures are affected or not. Correct. That is nothing but yeah, whether there is any journal entry, whether there is any accounting entry posted or not. When you run the month end activity, there are certain activities which will trigger accounting entries. There are certain account certain activities which will not trigger accounting entries. For example, when you maintain exchange rate, there is no accounting entry. You can directly open it. You can close it. I mean, you can directly put the exchange rate. You can save it. There is no accounting entry. Similarly, when you open and close the posting period, there is no accounting entry. When you open the period, when you close the period, will system post any debit credit accounting entry there? No. No. Now, when you are posting, when you are executing GRIR clearing, is it no accounting entry or there is an accounting entry? No accounting entry, sir. GRIR clearing. Do you have something called clear GL account? There is a T code or not? There is a transaction code called clear GL account. Yes or no? Yes, sir. There is a transaction code called post with clearing. Yes or no? Yes, sir. There are transaction codes yes, which talks about clear GL account, clear customer account, clear vendor account. Now, this clearing is a transaction. Similarly, there is something called post with the clearing. Whether you're talking about clear GL account, post with the clearing, you're talking about the same clearing here. In your clearing, there is an accounting entry called clearing entry. This clearing entry may be for residual amount. This clearing entry can be for zero amount. Am I correct? Clearing entry can be for any residual amount. Clearing entry can be for zero amount. Is my statement right or wrong? Yes. Yes, sir. If I'm talking about GRIR clearing, for example, on a purchase order, on a purchase order, goods worth 10,000 is received, invoice worth 10,000 is posted. Now, against the purchase order, GR is booked, IR is booked, GR booked for 10,000 credit, IR is booked for 10,000 debit, credit and debit difference is zero. Now, this, this accounting entry is being processed for zero amount. Meaning net impact is a zero because in the same GL account, there is a debit and credit posted. You are just removing the debit and credit from the GL account. Now this is a clearing account, more or less your GRIR, GRIR account, not more or less. In all these situations, your GRIR account is always zero impact posting. Am I correct? Your yes. GRIR account is a zero impact posting because system will allow you to clear the GRIR account only when GR, IR posted and only when the amount is exactly the same. If GR is posted for 10,000, IR is posted for 12,000. Since the debit and credit is not matching, it will not be partially matched out. It will not be cleared until you book the remaining 2,000. Until you book the remaining 2,000, it will not be cleared. Now, GR, IR account has got a dependency. GRIR account has got a dependency. Now, when you're talking about open and close period, is this has any dependency or when I should actually open the period and when I should actually close the period? Any logic or I can open close at any given point of time? At the month end. end only. So when I should open the period? A minus five. Month starting. For example, today we are on 24th June. Today we are on 24th June. Let's say, should I open the July period on 30th June or on 1st June or on 5th June after closing the month? When should I open the period? Now you may, you may sometimes get the simple questions like this in your interview. When I say simple questions like this, how do you open the period? You will confidently tell OB52. Who will open the period as a consultant or as a user? Who is supposed to open the period? 
कंसल्टेंट और दी यूजर 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 सर यूजर विल ओपन द पीडीएफ नाउ देयर आर टू पॉइंट्स हियर व्हेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ओपनिंग एंड क्लोजिंग ऑफ द पीरियड यू नीड टू टेल टू पॉइंट्स हियर पॉइंट नंबर 1 व्हेनेवर यू ओपन पीरियड व्हेनेवर यू क्लोज पीरियड डू यू गेट अ टीआर नंबर और नॉट यस वी विल गेट अ टीआर no no when you TR. open the period no, no. We'll when you close the period do you get a tr or you do not get a tr yes we get a tr we get a tr no we don't get a tr no tr we do not get tr is the end user activity but my question is whether it is end user activity or it is the consulting activity when you open or close the period will system prompt for a tr or not no no प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम इट मे नॉट प्रॉम्प्ट टी आर बिकॉज production system changes may not be locked by the basis consultant they will change the system status for the production so everybody knows there is a t code called client sc4 yes yeah. in the client yes, in the client configuration your basis consultant will not track the changes when your basis is not tracking the changes trs will not be generated the ideal logic is that in the production there is no point of any configuration like now do we mo- do we use ob52 or any other transaction code for opening and closing posting period only ob52 only 52 sir there is one more transaction code which is alr transaction code it is both the ways in some project some project managers says or in some project some companies says we will not give access for ob52 because it is a consulting transaction because ob52 is coming from where it is coming from your spro right yes. ob52 yes. is coming from where spro there is another transaction code called s underscore alr t code i don't remember the t code there is another t code alternative t code for ob52 which is your alr transaction code this alr will be given in some project ob52 will be given in some other project when somebody is specifically asking how your so periods you are opened and closed in, in the project sorry if dash 60 also we can do it sir open and close right there are multiple t codes but you need to decide which t code are you using meaning here you need to understand will this open close period access given to all the users or only to the selected user only selected yes. user any project this access like of open. opening and closing period will be given only to the selected user how do you control that this access is there only for the selected user with the help of what group authorization group with the help of the help of authorization group not authorization group. This is with the help of roles and authorization. Yeah. Now, when you're talking about roles and authorization, you should again understand there is something called roles and authorization. One of the common ticket that you should talk about your month end activity or month end support ticket is missing authorization, which is quite common. Missing authorization is quite common during the month end, especially when you are in the initial stage of your go live. Once your project has gone live. and after that you will be receiving lot of error messages lot of support tickets most of them are related to authorization most of them are related to authorization during the implementation project during the initial stage what we will do it is practically not possible for us to verify everything because there are lot of objects which are called during the transaction at the time of saving at the time of posting for example i want to see i wanted to give a user an authorization for posting a gl document now posting a gl document requires authorization for f-02 fb50 am i correct authorization to post a gl account is required with the help of 
f dash is zero to f b fifty. Is this right or wrong? There should be a row which contains f dash is zero to f b fifty. Let's say this row is created. When you are testing as a consultant, the whole objective of your testing is to see whether the T code is opening or not. This is the most common approach for any consultant to verify if the authorization is working or not. What we do, you give the transaction code, press enter. If you are able to open the screen, you tell this is fine. But what user is going to do when the user is going to put a company code? At company code level, he may get an authorization error. You are not authorized to post entries in thousand company code. Possible or not? I have the access to open the F dash zero two, but I don't have access to enter entries in thousand company code, two thousand company code, X Y Z company code. Possible or not? Yes, sir. Possible. Yes, sir. It's possible. Yes. Sir. Right now, I have the access to post entries in F dash zero two, F B fifty, whatsoever. Now, the moment I give a posting key related to, for example, I am the user who is authorized to post entries. Only in the GL account, for example, I am posting an accounting entry wherein I have chosen a customer account, I have chosen a vendor account. I may get an error message stating you are not authorized to use customer account, vendor account. Possible or not? Uh, yes, it can appear. Yes. All right. Now I am trying to choose a profit center, but I may get an error stating that you are not authorized to use profit center. Possible or not? Yes, sir. Possible. Yes, sir. Now I am trying to book an expense. I am trying to put a cost center. When I open the drop down for the cost center, nothing appears. Possible or not? Yes, sir. Possible. Right. Like this, there are different stages where you may receive the authorization related error. You need to understand and you need to quote all these kind of points in your interview. Tell that during the month end processing or. There is a new user joined, or we created a new user ID while working with roles and authorization during the hypercare support, or you added a new functionality. You added a new functionality whatsoever. There, the user is getting the authorization error. When you're talking about authorization error, never represent a transaction code authorization. Always represent execution of completed transaction based on the test case, based on the test scenario. When I say based on the test case, based on the test scenario, you will have lot of restrictions, which is requested by the user or which is requested by the client. They say that there are 200 profit center. Not every user is allowed to post in 200 profit center. They say that this set of users should have access only for this 10 profit center. Others cannot post entry here. Then how you are going to segregate all these points? You need to mention it here because most commonly you will get lot of error messages. Because of authorization during your month end, sometimes when you get the authorization error, error, you do not know that this is related to authorization. Meaning, when your user is not able to post anything, when your user is not able to display any report, output is different for you. Output is different for me. For example, I am a user who is working on GL. You are also user who is working on a GL. And when I am looking at my trial balance, or when you are looking at the trial balance. Or when I am looking at the accounts payable, you are looking at the accounts payable. In short, any report. I am also referring the same report. You are also referring the same report. My input parameters are same. Your input parameters are same. But you may get report balances twelve thousand. I may get report balances fifteen thousand. Possible or not? Same report. Two different users. Two different user ID is giving two different output. Possible or not? Yes, sir. Possible. Same report, two different user, different output. Possible or not? Amount is mismatching. For you, ten thousand output is coming. For me, fifteen thousand output is coming. Possible or not? Yes, sir. It's possible. This is possible because some authorization you may be missing. You may not have authorization to certain GL account. You may not have authorization to certain customer account, vendor account, or in short, any master data. You may not have authorization. How you are going to identify what authorization is missing? What is the transaction code to check authorization problems? SU fifty three. You have to use SU fifty three. Now, is this SU fifty three? Is it something that you should get from your user all always? Who will give you SU fifty three? Your manager. 
if you are working in a project for example i am a user i am a user i am telling that i am trying to post one entry or i am trying to pull a report but something is not working as expected you see that everything is fine config everything is okay but i don't know why it is not working you should whenever you are getting any error keep in your mind authorization is one of the checklist when i say authorization is one of the checklist when everything is fine because of authorization also certain things will not work certain things will work incorrect way in sap don't blindly always look at the t code whether everything is right config is correct and all don't straight away go and verify anywhere first thing look at if authorization is properly working or not if authorization is there ask check the other parameters if authorization is missing find out by asking user to share su53 sometimes user is aware how to put su53 or not sometimes user is also missing su53 authorization some users they cannot put su53 they get a message you are not authorized to use su53 in that case know the user who is trying to use it and get that user id you go to su53 from your screen on the same screen the moment you put su53 it will give your user authorization error but on the same screen you will find one icon called other user on the same su53 you will find an icon called other user click on other user you will get a pop up on the pop up input the user id who is facing the problem and if that user has got any authorization error that user authorization error you can see from your system you don't need to depend on that user to share this su53 screenshot if that user is missing the authorization or if the user is not aware how to put su53 they might put 100 questions how should i put su53 what is su53 and all instead take from your side give that to the basis consultant now you should know how to fix authorization related error as a fico consultant you cannot say i do not know how roles and authorizations will work because this is one of the point because of authorization you will get different kind of errors in your project especially during the month end when you are talking as a project team when you are talking as a project team you will get lot of authorization error because of this because initially nobody will thoroughly test authorizations in any project we don't thoroughly test authorization we will check the authorization only at the high level when i say high level you will put the t code t code is open you say that okay this is fine later on when the user is actually trying to enter the data they will get stuck somewhere accordingly you are going to fix or you are going to provide the missing authorization now here you need to know how to check the authorization how to check the roles how to identify the role with the help of t code and how do you identify which object is missing and what roles to be added or what roles are using this object you should have the minimum knowledge on it if this minimum knowledge minimum skill set is not there it may be difficult for you to handle in the project when you become a consultant because you cannot straight away tell this is basis this is abap this is mm this is st you cannot straight away tell when you are a consultant you have to look into it though it is not your area tomorrow when you are becoming a consultant though it is related to technical though it is related to other functional you need to check from your side make sure that yes i can give it to them otherwise they may say that you can check this this also you do not know they might say that you tell me what to assign when you give basis consultant that this error is coming for this user basis consultant will put another reply to you please tell me which role to assign to this user how do you know which role to be assigned for that only you sent an email to basis basis is responding back to you please give me the role so that i will assign to the user now again it is your responsibility to know which role need to be assigned to fix this authorization error because basis guy will not assign anything on its own basis will always work with the inputs instructions provided by the functional what instructions you are going to provide how do you identify slowly we need to understand because these are all connected to your month end only these are all connected to month end because we are not talking about month end activities from the support project point of view we are talking month end activities from the implementation project point of view rollout project point of view in short as a project consultant sometimes you may be calling as a project consultant you may be calling it as a support consultant project consultant is the guy who is working in implementation rollout support consultant is the person who is working in the support project slowly understand the differences 
terminologies accordingly respond back to some questions otherwise for some questions whatever you answer other than this one liners will give negative impression for certain questions if you are not giving one liner answer you will get negative impression in the interviews especially make sure you are familiar with most commonly used maximum terminology when i say most commonly used maximum terminology sometimes your user will tell only one liner they want you to tell something sometimes your project manager will tell only one liner they want you to do something your technical consultant your basis consultant or your other functional consultants may tell only one liner for example during the month end only another problem let's say one user is executing a report <clears throat> one user is executing a report output is coming wrong user is executing a report it can be any report you can take any report the output is coming wrong and user had reported an incident you also verified in the production system you also found that yes output is wrong it is supposed to show 8000 but it is showing 7500 500 is missing or it is showing excess amount or shortage amount value is not correct in the report now when it is coming from the report you do not know why it is coming you will give your effort from your side to analyze you could not trace anything why this is happening like this because report is working based on a logic now you want abap consultant to look at this report to understand or to tell you why this output is not correct so what you are going to tell to the abap you are going to tell the abap that this particular report is giving wrong report this particular report is giving wrong report by looking at it your abap consultant cannot tell this is the reason for it by looking at the report abap consultant cannot tell this is the reason for it now you are getting the problem in production system you are getting the problem in production system this may be a high priority ticket you are getting the report output wrong in the production any data any report which is coming from the production especially during the month end everything will be prior top priority or high priority they cannot wait after that report they need to pass some other adjustment entry or they need to give that report to management somebody else they cannot give wrong data at the same time they cannot tell sap is not working fine or sap report is not correct so we have prepared the report manually so these are not expected in any project so you need to fix it on priority very urgently keep all your work aside ask your abap consultant to put all his work aside sit and then analyze it now how abap consultant will understand this you need to explain them what you are going to explain you need to explain what is this particular report and what is the output that it is supposed to bring what output it is bringing he cannot check or debug in the production because abapper will not have the id in production keep in your mind abap consultants will not have ids in production abap consultants will have ids in only in development quality abap is not supposed to have any user id in production because abap has got nothing to do in production so what how abappers will check in the production abappers will check in the production with the help of firefighter id there is something called ffid or firefighter id with the help of a firefighter abap consultant will debug in production now for abap consultant to debug in production you may be working from mumbai abap consultant may be working from some other location maybe delhi mumbai hyderabad pune anywhere you both are not sitting in the same, lo same location you are working from home abap is also working from home meaning you cannot sit together to analyze it you are at two different locations or even if you are at the same location you cannot sit next to abap consultant because he feels uncomfortable to check when you are around similarly when there is a problem somebody is sitting next to you you will also feel uncomfortable give me some time let me check and come back to you i will also tell the same thing you will also tell the same thing abapper also will tell the same thing now what is happening here your abapper will tell okay create a variant one line he will use create a variant or give me a variant you cannot ask back what do you mean by variant you cannot ask what is a variant it will be very bad situation if you are asking to an abap or cons abap consultant if your abap is asking okay please create a variant or give me a variant i will check don't ask what is variant can we ask as a fico consultant in a project if there is a problem in any report or in anything your abap consultant is asking for a variant can we say i do not know is that valid 
it's not valid sir no way you can say i don't know what is a variant no way impossible you can better say i don't know sip but you cannot say i do not know variant it's better to say i don't know sip than telling i do not know what is a variant because there are certain things which you should never tell i do not know there are certain things in sip which you should never tell to anybody if you are representing yourself as a pico consultant who is currently working there is a certain list there are certain things which you should never tell i do not know no matter what whatever the situation whether you are zero year experience or n number of your experience there are certain things for which there is no answer called i do not know you must know else you are not a pico consultant now variant falls under that variant falls under that the same person who is telling i don't know variant is the same guy who is talking about i worked on rise up object same guy who is talking about i worked on fit gap analysis same person who is talking about i worked on customization report workflow all these kind of things and the same person who is telling i do not know what is a variant meaning there are lot of associated things there are lot of interconnected things that you have to remember that you have to know not as a specific point but as a connecting point when i say as a connecting point when you're talking about something you should bring some other points when you're talking about x point you'll have to bring y z a b c d only then you will practically understand how exactly things will happen in a project and what people are expecting from you and what you're supposed to do deliver in a project else your work environment will also become a training environment there is no difference you are sitting and practicing at home and there is no difference you are working in the office as a consultant there is a huge difference when you are sitting and then practicing meaning when you are getting it trained when you are practicing the approach mindset thought process is different when you are in a project it is completely different things will come from 360 degrees to you you never know from which corner it is coming you have to handle everything you cannot say i don't know this you cannot say i have not worked on it end of the day you are the one who is supposed to solve it i do not know i have not worked on this before are ruled out if you are telling that you will be ruled out from the project whatever is the requirement make sure you have that confidence you have that understanding you have that confidence skill set in you to handle it all right i think we are running late let me stop this here the continuation part i'll talk in the tomorrow's session okay sir, sir i have one doubt sir, sir. hello yeah, one second